ラキサシーズティーハウス。こんにちは、皆さん。This is Gray from Wakasashi's Tea House over in Japan. Are you Genki? I'm a little bit cold today, again, but I am pretty Genki. Today I want to do a short review and give my thoughts on episode 3 of Hawkeye, the TV series from Marvel Studios. This episode is called Echoes. Can you guess why? That's right, the mysterious woman who appeared at the end of episode 2. She plays a major role in this episode, and of course, her name is Echo. I don't know much about the character. What I've heard is she's、um, a villain, maybe a minor villain from the Daredevil comics. And I think she appeared in some of the Hawkeye comics as well. So, what did I think of this episode? How does it compare to the first two episodes from last week? Well, if you watch my first video, you'll know that I enjoyed episode one and two. I thought they were pretty good. They were funny. I liked the, the banter, I liked the kind of characterization of Kate and Clint. Of course, it's great seeing Clint Barton, Hawkeye again. So, this one I thought was an improvement on the first two episodes. There was a really good, well, actually, two really good action scenes in there where you see Hawkeye being Hawkeye, firing arrows. He's got trick arrows, he's got brilliant arrows, he's doing stunts, he's flying through the air. You've got Kate being Kate, you know, she's clumsy, she makes mistakes, but she's got a great rapport, a great kind of banter going on with Hawkeye. There's a cracking scene in a, in a warehouse where you see Clint like, taking out people with. Non lethal Disney arrows, and a cracking scene where there's a chase through the streets which leads to a, a big fight on a bridge. There's a nice nod to some Ant Man tech. So, yeah, good action, good comedy, and a nice kind of touching bonding scene between Kate and Clint. Okay, so let's go on to my story summary. Here we go. The episode opens and it's 2007, and we see a little girl at a school. She can't hear. And she's trying to read her teacher's lips. Then we go back to the girl's apartment and we see some bonding with her. I think it's her father, and her father's using sign language and speaking, and she's answering with sign language. And she's asking, Why can't I go to the school, the special school? Like you promised. And he's, he said,、mm, I'm sorry, I can't pay for it, but it will do you good to go to the regular school. Then her father drops her off at a karate school and he says to her, It's not about your size, it's about your speed. And he calls her Maya, so we learn her name's Maya. And then he says something important. He says to her, Your uncle's going to pick you up after class and I'll see you later on tonight. So it's setting something up for the future episodes. Can you guess who her uncle is? No spoilers from me. Next, we see an older Maya. She's riding a motorbike back to her father's auto repair shop. Before she goes in, she sees through the window Ronin inside, and he's killing everybody in there. So she bursts in, but Ronin's gone, and she finds her father. And her father dies in her arms, telling her to release the dragon. After the opening credits, we return to present day and we catch up with Hawkeye and Kate Bishop. They've been captured and they're tied up in a toy factory by the tracksuit mafia. Echo arrives and she starts to question Clint, of course, using sign language and using an、uh, interpreter, the guy there with the nice coat and moustache. And she's asking about Ronin, and Clint tells her he's dead. Black Widow killed him. Now Maya doesn't believe him, she can see that he's lying. And then Clint is like whispering to Kate, Don't worry, I'm going to get you out of here. He's cutting his bonds at the same time. Then he breaks free, he runs, and they all chase after him. Maya chases Clint and she catches him, and they start to fight. She's super fast and brilliant at martial arts. She kicks him in the head, knocks his hearing aid out, flying. It lands on the floor and she stamps on it, crushes it.、Um, then Clint runs and he manages to get hold of his bow and arrows. And what follows is a really cool Hawkeye action scene where he's firing arrows, of course, non lethal with it being Disney. He's firing arrows through hands, through shoulders, knocking people down, and yeah, just taking them all out. It's a great scene. And they, he escapes, he fires a really cool arrow, and it, it somehow it hits Kate's bonds, and it, she breaks free, and they get out of there, and they find two cars outside, and they're like, okay. Which one should we hotwire? The cool one or the dad's car? Of course, they go for the dad's car. So Clint hotwires the car. No, not that one, I'm afraid. The dad car. And they flee, pursued by a bear. No, I'm just kidding.、Um, the tracksuit mafia follow them in cars and vans. And Clint's driving. So he gets Kate to fire some arrows and he gives her some trick arrows. 
Um, and one of them is like an exploding arrow. One's a purple smoke arrow. There's a kind of weird putty arrow which blocks the windscreen in one of the cars. And then a plunger arrow which hits the car and just doesn't seem to do anything. And then there's an incredible scene where um, Clint fires a PIM Industries arrow. If you know the PIM, that's a reference to Ant-Man's company. And he fires that and he gets Kate to fire a normal arrow and they collide and a huge giant arrow comes down and blocks his van, like blows it up almost. And then they escape onto a train. So they're on the train and Kate's talking away to Clint and of course he's lost his hearing gate so he can't hear what she's saying. And um, the show kind of plays that joke quite a bit from now on. Then they go back to the apartment, um, I think where Clint's staying, and there's a nice scene, a nice kind of bonding scene between Clint and Kate where he can't hear that his son's called him. His son's asking like, Dad, are you going to be back for movie night? And she's kind of writing down what her son's saying because he can't hear what he's saying. So she helps him out with a phone call. So they make their way to a doctor's which who only accepts cash and Clint gets a new hearing aid. So sometimes he can hear Kate, but sometimes he switches it off, so you know he can't hear her. So again, they kind of keep that joke running through the, through the show, through this episode. After that, they make their way to a cafe to get something to eat. And Kate's telling Clint that, you need a better costume, you need something cool, something like defining. You know, you need to rebrand yourself more. And she shows this picture that she's done, this little sketch, which is a little nod to the uh, traditional, like the classic costume from the comics. She's saying, like, you need it in purple. And he's asking, what's this weird thing on, over my eyes? And she said, you know, it's like a hawk, because you're Hawkeye, and there's a H on your head. So he says to her, like... You know, um, the whole point of my, my role is to kind of blend into the shadows, you know, not to stand out. So that's kind of lost on her. Then they, they hatch a plan to go to Kate's mother's apartment to try and get some evidence because she thinks, um, you know, her future father-in-law, Jacques, the dastardly uh, moustache twirling villain, the sword fighter, thinks he's, the, he's, got, he's been behind the death of Armand from the last episode. So they break in and... Hawkeye's saying, you sure no one's home, right? And she's like, yeah, of course. Anyway, so she's looking through the apartment and he goes off. Clint, he's walking and he hears something. And then you get this scene and this is where the episode ends. Jack with a sword, with Ronin's sword extended at Clint's neck saying, who the hell are you? What are you doing? So how about you? Did you like the episode? Did you hate it? Did it make you cry? Did it make you shake your head? Were you wondering, like, what am I doing watching this? Anyway, that's it for my review. So, as always, thanks so much for watching. I hope to see you in a future video. This is Grey from Wakazashi's Tea House signing off for the night, saying, Matane! See you! Wakazashi's Tea House! Please subscribe! That's enough for my brief summary. Let's get to the. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. Does anyone know? 